we'll move on to art and design. Uh, okay. And then, um, so um, when did you really get into art and design? Was it um, during your time at uh, Art Camp? Or it... Kind of after Gilmore Girl. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I thought, well, uh, a friend of mine has a greeting card company, and I thought I, I would like to try doing a few characters. I always thought that would be fun. And so um, I just, there's a, there's a program called lynda.com, mm -hmm. and um, they have, um, you pay a certain amount per month, and you can uh, learn uh, programs for free. Oh, so Adobe, I, okay. Yeah, Adobe Illustrator. So I just went and I looked at as many um, of those videos as I can. They make it really easy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I, and, I, and I love it now. So now I like to use Illustrator a lot, and you can use it for a lot of different things. And I know that one much more than I know Photoshop or anything like that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Mango Pop and how you started, and why did you decide to call it Mango Pop? Because it sounds like you're um, Filipino because it's mango. <laughs> do, you, do you love mangoes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This country has a lot of mangoes. Different kinds. Like, there's Indian mangoes. Yep. Different sizes and shapes. Yeah, we have green mangoes, yellow mangoes, small mangoes, yeah. um, big mangoes, a lot. We even have crossbreed mangoes. It's crazy. Oh, really? Even have an no, island. I... Even have an island here where it's forbidden to bring other mangoes in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, cause I love mango. I love, I love pickled mangoes. I love, you know, fresh mango. I just, and my grandpa, um. Uh, when I grew up, he had a great mango tree in his backyard because I grew up in Hawaii, and Hawaii has great oh. mangoes too. And uh, that was just one of my favorite things, you know, just pick it fresh from the tree, just cut it yeah. and eat it. I mean, just like real, like a mature tree that has like really good ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, yeah. I, I love them. So I was thinking about <laughs> a company name, I was like, mm, I have to have mango in there somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just trying to uh, fit it in there. But I, 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 I love it. I mean, it's easy to remember for some. What kind of art do you offer or your products? What are your products? Well, I started um, with cards, greeting cards, and then I sort of expanded into necklaces and T-shirts and stuff. But now I'm kind of going back to cards. I find, like, the, the thing that I like the, the most is having that little humor in the card. Uh, so I found that I I like that. Um, that's my favorite thing. So I'm kind of sticking with that. And then and then they're online right now. If you go to um, I have an Etsy. Is Etsy big over in the Philippines? Etsy. You know what I'm talking Etsy. about? Etsy.com. E T S Y. No. I think it's a great site. It's all like um, handmade. Uh, it's all handmade things. Mm -hmm. So it's little boutique shops, little uh, small business owners. Uh huh. And um, I have a man I have man my mango pop stuff up there, um, but if you go mangopop dot com, it'll have a link also right. to my Etsy site. Okay. Yeah. And um, what are the influences of your art? Um, they're kind of kawaii. They're cute. So. <laughs> well, they're definitely um, kawaii. Are they Japanese uh, influenced, or um, is this just all you? Or. Yeah. No, I think that I um, definitely. Well, the w the girl that's my friend. Her name. Uh, uh, well, her company name is Fomato, mm -hmm. and she also does cards, super cute, mm -hmm. um, Fomato.com, and um, of course I grew up Hello Kitty, so <laughs> I love all those little cute things, I admit it, I admit it, and then, um, and then on, on the other end of the spectrum, one of my favorite artists, his name is Joe Soren, S-O-R-R-E-N, and he definitely has a great website up that you can check out. Amazing artist. He's definitely one of my favorite people um, to look at. And then also just when you go to, when I went to Japan the last time, and just looking at all of their, uh, just being in that, uh, in that world, there's a lot of artistic influences just walking around, and, 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 I, and I loved it. And also, can you tell us about the um, Asian no. comics that you worked on like two years ago? Oh yeah, um, it's called Secret Identities. Yes. Yeah. And I did one of the stories in there, and they're actually now putting together a Secret Identities two, so volume two. So that 
It'll probably be about um, at least a few months because I think they're just collecting stories from it now. Um, a lot of great guys that have worked on this. I think this next one is going to be about villains more from a villain's point of view. Uh, yeah, because you also voice on um, Kim Possible, right? Because I love that character show. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are good at doing your homework. Wow, you know what? <laughs> I did the voice on Kim Possible. Yeah, I just love that show. So it's all like connected in some ways. <laughs> That's a fun show. She kicks butt. Yeah, you, um, you design your own um, album art for your record? I actually am designing something right now that looks a lot like manga pop characters for my friend uh, Durwood. They, uh, their CD is going to come out probably later in a few months. I think they're going to... Uh, they, might, they might not have started recording yet, so maybe a little bit longer, depending, because they're doing it independently. But I'm doing, I'm doing the artwork for, for them. 